Greetings, dear ones. I'm Maitri Lee Bellul, coming to you from the coast of North Carolina with my Sunday Afternoon with Maitri series of videos. Uh, and if you're new, the pillow is because I'm laid up from a fall, a bad fall, but I'm doing, it's four weeks now and I'm doing, I'm starting to do better. This week, which is Thanksgiving week in the United States has inspired me to write what I think is relevant this year. And I just, I spent a very long time writing a very long blog post on this topic that is part one. I am now, as you'll know if you've been following me, doing a two-part series on Sunday. Part one is on my long-running blog, Maitri's Heart. It is a 14-year-old blog with over 2 million visits. And now I'm doing the YouTube channels so that I can reach more people with the message and that I hope to spread and to the to that end I did a blog post this week there will be a link to that blog post and all of the other links where you can reach me below in the description under this video but the blog post and this video are called being thankful in the time of COVID. Thanksgiving is going to be very different this year for most of us. While, while it is only a holiday this week celebrated in the United States, it is the beginning of the holiday season. And the great majority of people, I think, around the world are, in the next couple of months, going to be celebrating all kinds of holidays. Not just Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, but every faith has their own type of celebration. And Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all manner of holidays are celebrated in the month ahead. And what I'm saying here today about Thanksgiving is true for the whole holiday season this year. But it is Thanksgiving week here. So I've given a lot of thought. And this morning, as I was preparing to write the blog post, I always spend quite a long time making notes and thoughts and praying and meditating and really searching my heart for the thing that I want to say, like last week when I talked about compassionate listening that's so important and so healing and so helpful during these difficult days. And you can go back and look at last week's video and blog post to read more or watch more about that. But as I was preparing this morning, I came upon several quotes, three of which I shared in the blog post, and I created a graphic for the top of the blog post, as I always do, with a quote that I, I don't think, I don't think I, I could express any better than what Sam Lefkowitz did in this quote of his. He said, when asked if my cup is half full or half empty, my only response is that I'm grateful I have a cup. In my blog post, I did write, I too have a cup. We all have a cup. Even in the poorest of circumstances, which I, I cannot begin to imagine, I do not 
I mean, my heart can't hardly bear the suffering of many the world over. I would like to believe most people, of course not all people, most people have experienced something to fill their cup this year, be it the smile or the kindness of a stranger, love from a family member, support from an unexpected source. I myself am very grateful for my family, my three children and their spouses who are also like children to me and my four grandchildren. We are all healthy so far with this COVID and hope to remain so. And while at the same time, I feel gratitude that we are all safe. Alongside that, I am mourning the loss of people around the world and I feel a deep sadness for those who have lost loved ones. And so this Thanksgiving, if you're in the States and you celebrate Thanksgiving, or for any of you around the world who will have the holiday season just ahead, whatever you may celebrate, we are all most likely going to be doing things very different. And it kind of comes with some sadness and some confusion. Like many, I will not be able to see my out-of-town children and their families. They, they usually come home for the holidays. And as they live out of town and are all young working people with children in school and jobs, and uh, they usually, in the best of times, can only come home twice a year. But with COVID, I have not seen my out-of-town children since the last holiday season, a year ago. I can't even believe it. How have we coped? How have most of us coped with the use of a video platform like Zoom? I think Zoom has saved more people through this pandemic Families are able to connect with one another. Friends are able to connect with one another. Business people are able to connect with one another. Students are able to connect with their teachers in this platform. And Zoom, if you don't have it, if you don't know about it, look it up online. You can get a free account and speak face-to-face -face via video with your loved ones. That's how we will be, our family, will be celebrating the holidays. We will meet on Thanksgiving all together from our individual homes on Zoom so that we can see one another face-to-face. -face. We will do the same thing on Christmas. I fortunately have one of my children, my daughter Rachel and her family who live here, and I would normally go to their house for Thanksgiving, but because of COVID and with my recent injury that has me laid up, I, I will have to stay home, but Rachel has worked out a way to, after they eat, to bring me a Thanksgiving plate, have a glass of wine with me, and it'll be nice to be with somebody for a short time. This year we're finding ways to celebrate any way that we can. One of the things that I wrote in the blog post that came to me as I was writing, because in the United States, on Thanksgiving, countless thousands of people always look forward on Thanksgiving morning to the Macy's Day Parade. It's a huge yearly event that takes place in New York City, but it, it's broadcast all around the world. And it is 
a sight to see with gigantic balloon animals and Disney characters and floats with princesses and other famous people waving. And there are just thousands of people that line the streets on either side. It is a joyous celebration, usually. This year, I had to look it up because I wasn't sure what they were doing. Uh, the Macy's Day Parade is going to happen on a smaller geographic uh, level, but there can be no spectators. It will be broadcast only on TV. Even if you live in New York, you'll have to watch it on TV. I bring that up because the Macy's Day Parade is kind of a... Metaphor isn't the right word. I'm kind of losing my word there. But that feeling of joy and jubilation and excitement of coming together with those we love, family, friends, our family of friends, maybe strangers that we've come together with to celebrate the love and the and give thanks and feel the gratitude for all that we have in our life, all of the many blessings. We usually approach this in a much different way. As I said in the blog post, I don't believe that any of us are going to be approaching Thanksgiving with that Macy's Day Parade spirit in our heart. Which doesn't mean we are not grateful for many things. There was a wonderful quote by Charlotte Bronte that's in the blog post, and I don't have it in front of me now, but she spoke about almost achieving contentment, feeling very thankful, and feeling a deep gratitude, but not an over-the-top kind of gratitude. Because in the face of all of our blessings is the suffering of the world. It can be so overwhelming how to cope with everything. In addition to the COVID virus, which has seems to have been going on forever and no end in sight at this time, a dystopian nightmare for sure. Like I wrote in the blog post, it is like being in a nightmare you can't wake up from because it just goes on and on. Ever more horrors and people are afraid. And But in spite of it all, there are blessings. Most of us and I'm very aware that not everyone, most of us, have things to be thankful for. And I think that this Thanksgiving, it will be a contemplative kind of holiday for all of us. A time to take stock of what the whole last year has meant. All of COVID. In the United States, the election year that seemed as though it would never end with contentious debates and unbelievable things occurring that were just horrifying and on and on. This year has been so full of so many hard things for so many people. We come to this Thanksgiving with a quiet gratitude, also holding in our hearts those who have suffered, who are suffering, who are ill now, fighting this disease, for those who are unable to be out in the world at all because of this virus for people who have lost jobs and lost income 
throughout this time for the many losses of dear ones. We take all of that into our heart and yet it cannot completely block out those things that we may in fact have to search our hearts for. The smallest things. And I'm very, very aware as I talk about families and friends that a lot of people are alone for the holidays. For many people, the holidays are not a happy time. There's much depression over the holidays. I am both blessed to have a family that I love, that loves me, even though we can't be together. And at the same time, I live alone. I grew up having big family holidays and I raised my children. My husband and I raised our three children, excited about the holidays, all the busyness in the household and the cooking, the baking, the meals, and inviting family and friends and people who had nowhere to go. We would invite them for a holiday. It was so much joyful planning and celebrating. Now, and for 20 years, I've lived alone. And there have been some really lonely times. And while I will communicate with my children later in the day on the holidays, they are with their little families. And I am here with my little Molly, my darling Molly, my Chihuahua Corgi mix. And she did show up in one of the videos. She's asleep next to me right now. But I have sat kind of wistful, thinking about the years when there was such a hubbub and children and grandparents and all kinds of people. Some people experience a stark, painful loneliness over the holidays. And I want you to know that you are not forgotten. As we come to these days, I hold you in my heart as well. I hold you in my prayers. I will be present in my Patreon community on both Thanksgiving and Christmas so that I can communicate, leave a message, answer people, as I do on social media as well, on Instagram and Facebook. I don't want anyone to feel that they're alone. That's, I guess, as I grow older, I'm 66, the one thing that I realize that is a very deep learning and that is that as my own home life has diminished in terms of what I just spoke about, having people in the house with me, having a spouse or a partner, having children, I feel in a very powerful, profound way, the connection to people around the world. We really are not alone. It's such an overused phrase. We are all one, and people kind of roll their eyes. In fact, we are all connected. And I am more alone than I have ever been in my life here. And yet I am blessed with connections. The internet has provided us a vehicle to connect with other people. 
like I'm talking to you right now in this video. I feel in my heart your presence. It matters to me. If you're watching this, I want you to know that you matter to me. That somewhere in the world, a little grandma <laughs> living in a little place called Dragonfly Cottage with her little dog and her parakeets and her work. I'm a writer and an artist and I feel you and I am creating my work for you. And on this Thanksgiving, if you're alone, I encourage you in the spirit of having something to be thankful for, if you are able, perhaps you could try to celebrate your connection with others in the world by setting an extra place at the table and acknowledging that as you have your meal Others are with you in spirit. Make yourself a cup of tea and set another teacup on the table and light a candle. And if you are a praying person, pray that you will feel the spirit, the heart of all of those around the world that all of those who are alone may also feel even just a twinkling of a knowing that they are not alone and that people care. We all know that there are people who cannot be reached or touched in this way. And that is not lost on me either and I pray that they may have some relief, some ease of suffering that something may happen to help them. I've, I've always loved Thanksgiving. I've always loved Christmas, too. At 66, I'm still like a little girl who delights in tw the twinkly lights and the Christmas tree and... Um, all of those things that the holidays are. But the holidays have really gotten so commercial and so expensive. We've simplified that in our family by just getting some gifts for the little children, the grandchildren. And all of us adults have a gift exchange. We, I put all the names in a bowl and draw them randomly and the order that they come out in I write down and this person has that person has that person and so on each adult gives a gift and receives a gift and it's not an expensive it had been a $25 limit this year not even that this year we said because some of my children or their spouses have been out of work through COVID it's been hard, so we said, you know, homemade, handmade, something very inexpensive, anything like that, that will do. But back to Thanksgiving, it is, it is the kickoff of the holiday season. It is the last moment of it is a time to relax into the love. Enjoy the family and friends if you're fortunate enough to be with them. Enjoy the food if you're fortunate enough to have Thanksgiving meal to share. And it's sort of a pause. Because the very next day, the holiday season arrives with a bang, with Black Friday sales and all of the 
hoo-ha that ensues for the next many weeks ahead. I encourage you to use this Thanksgiving to take a pause. If you are in a family situation with a number of other people in your house, take a moment alone. Maybe go outside or in a quiet place and think about the blessings that you do have in your life. The smallest thing can be a huge blessing. Take that quiet time. Say a prayer for those who are not in your fortunate situation. Say a prayer for those who have suffered terrible losses through COVID. Say a prayer for everyone. And close your eyes and send out a message of love that others who are alone, who need to feel a moment of love or of kindness, may feel those waves of love that you are sending out. That's what I would like to end with this week. I would ask that we all take a quiet moment, whether it's Thanksgiving here in the United States or anywhere around the world. Take any moment. Take this moment and close your eyes and whisper, you're not alone. And let those words filled with love travel around the world to reach and touch the others that need to hear them. I say it to you. I am holding you in my heart. I am holding you in my prayers. I'm sending you love wherever you are in the world. On this Thanksgiving week in the United States that we celebrate, but to everyone everywhere. You are not alone. I am here with you. I will be here with you in these videos, in my heart, every day, in my prayers. Blessings to one and all. Thank you so much for being here with me. If you are enjoying these videos, it would really help me a lot if you would hit the thumbs up <laughs> to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and you can read part one of Being Thankful in the Time of COVID on my website. I will have the link to the blog post below as well and all of the places you can find me on social media. And if you would like to have uh, a taste of my morning coffee videos, I do a uh, every morning in my Patreon community, I do a morning coffee with Maitri video. It's a private closed community for women only. Right now, I'm reading them a book a little each day and talking about what it all means. And I do, on Monday, I make that video public. And it will be, they will be listed here on my channel. And in social media, I always put reminders up, but you can, you can experience a morning coffee video and, and see how that feels. I am able to do this work and make these videos because of the support of my patrons at Patreon. I thank you so much. And if you'd like to check it out, that link is below. Many blessings. Much love. I'll see you next week.